Welcome to Palma, Mallorca, where behind me here is a brand new Sunseeker 95 yacht. But it's not quite a standard one. This is the Meros co-ownership boat. So it has been built specifically for Meros as a, a, a co-ownership vessel. It has been adapted for that use with a number of exterior styling as well as interior fit out things that make it a little bit different. The idea of a Meros boat is that it is absolutely fully kitted out with toys and crew and everything you need. So all you need to do is literally turn up and enjoy your boat. So we're going to give you a full tour, show you everything there is about the boat, what's new about it, what's different, some of the kit on board, and then crucially sit down and understand a little bit more about the, how the shared ownership scheme works. So I mentioned toys and here are the first one. This is a Williams 460 Sport Jet. Really big boat to, 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 to find on a, uh, a yacht of this size. So a really proper sports boat, perfect for water sports. You can ski behind that, wakeboard behind it. And you can see that that is on a large hydraulic platform that lowers down into the sea to launch and recover it. It also means you've then got a really, love platform, a really lovely platform down at sea level. There's more toys here. We can see a couple of sea bobs in that locker there. So again, another more toys there. And in fact, over on the other side, you can probably just about see there is a, an e-foil, an Audi e-foil, uh, which is effectively an electric surfboard that runs on a foil. Really good fun. Lots and lots of things to play with. They've also got electric surfboards and all manner of different toys. So big cockpit area here. These aren't actually quite the right chairs. There's some uh, 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 folding director's chairs that are due to go there, so they're just temporary. They weren't, didn't arrive in time for the show. But lovely big seating area here. Lovely shade extension to the flybridge overhead, and this is a really neat detail I haven't seen before. So these glass panels actually have infrared heating elements in them. So when you're sitting outside during the colder months of the year, you get a lovely radiant glow coming down from there. And it's, it doesn't heat the air, it literally just heats, it has a sort of radiant heat so that if you're sitting underneath it, you stay nice and warm, the table stays nice and warm, and you can use it all year round. And that's key to these kind of shared ownership things where you get weeks during the winter months too that you want to use it and it all helps make it more usable. We'll look inside in a minute, but first we'll do a quick tour of the decks. You can see we've got a little sink on that side. And over on this side, we have an extra helm station for coming alongside. It is a fully crewed and captain boat, so you don't really have to worry about any of that, but I'll try and show you some of the things as we go. So lovely big walk around deck. It's extended over the top view here, so it stays nice and sheltered. There is access to the galley in here, so I'm just, hope you don't mind, I'm very quickly gonna close this just so I can whiz past and then up to the foredeck area here and this is a very lovely spot so you can see this is one of the changes actually one of the physical changes they've made to the boat is that they've extended this section here just to improve the profile because it tended to be a slightly sort of abrupt snub nose look to this boat and by extending this area here. The whole thing looks prettier from the outside and it creates a really nice sheltered area here. So big table in the middle, seating, but let me show you something else. If we step up over these seats, you can see there's some steps here, and then you come up to an enormous raised sun pad area. And how cool is this? You really do feel like king of the world up here, but what a lovely spot to chill out relax here, got this lovely headdress behind, absolutely perfect. And then you can see there is a sun canopy providing a bit of shade to this seating area here. And then back down this side, now you can see there are glass insets in the bulwarks here to just enable the view out and you'll see why that makes a difference inside in a minute. Got one access through here and I'll show you that from the inside and then a lovely balcony here. So this whole section folds down, creates a balcony over the sea, 
you can see we've got sliding doors here out from the saloon. So we haven't got room to put that down here in the show, but that is a really lovely feature. Now, before we go inside, let me take you up to, no, actually, let's go inside. We'll start inside and then we'll come to the flybridge later on. So you see sliding doors that open up and then fantastic main deck, saloon and dining area. Really, really lovely. There's no bulkheads to separate. It's all open plan, makes the most of the space. Big low level seating area, enormous high-low TV on this side. And all the colors have been kept quite neutral. Um, obviously it's shared ownership. It just means that you have a, a fairly uncontroversial interior style, for want of a better word, but you can then personalize it by decorating it with your own scatter cushions or style. So they have the option to keep your own personal effects locally in a sort of storage area and they can bring them on board and you can personalize it yourself. So if you happen to want one particular color of scatter cushions or decor or personal photographs, you can have them arranged around the boat to make it feel like your own for your weeks, the weeks that you're there. So dining area there. Now this is that sliding doors, those twin sliding doors that open up and that's the balcony that drops down over the sea there. So when you're sitting here at the dining area, you can have that open, a view out over the sea, a nice fresh breeze coming through. Really lovely feature. Now there is access to the galley directly through here. So this is a crew area. I hope they don't mind if I have a quick peek. I think they have been warned. So this is the kind of pantry area for serving guests out in the main dining area. Now this was that door that I briefly closed earlier, but you can see they have separate crew access because they can come and go through there if they want to. It also helps if you're cooking inside. It's lovely to have a bit of fresh air, but full professional standard galley, lots of space. I won't show you everything, but you can see we've got lots of cooling space here and freezer space, microwaves, ovens, everything you need. But that can all be kept separate so crew can come and go via that exterior door if they want to. And then forward this way. And this is one of the real wow factors. First of all, there is a, a day heads here and I'll just tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. But Good to know that there is a day heads on the main deck so that you don't have to run up and down to your cabin all the time. But you can see there is a door that closes that off if you want to. And I'll explain why in just a second once I have showed you the main deck cabin. Now this is the master cabin on board and one of the real selling points of this boat for a 95 foot yacht to have a massive main deck master cabin like this is really very special. Now, one of the advantages is you get a fantastic view out, and this is what I was talking about. That's why you've got those glass inserts in those bulwarks. It means you can have a view out when you're lying in bed. I'm not gonna lie on the owner's bed, but you see what I mean. At, at eye level, you get a fantastic view out straight through there. The elevated position obviously gives you better views. You get bigger windows. And because you're well forward from any of the engine noise, it's a really lovely, quiet space to be massive TV set in that bulkhead there. But this is the other thing I absolutely love about this boat. You have this magnificent sort of two tier apartment and you can see the stairs sweeping down through here. And you have a dressing area on the lower level. So surrounded by wardrobes, I'll have a quick peek in one of them. I won't look again because it will be sort of owners and crews kit in here, but you can see that is a lovely dressing area. And then this, this is a new feature actually. This is a new glass uh, sort of balustrade and a bit more storage here, just to sort of lift the whole look and feel of the space a little bit more elegance. Got a dressing table over there and then down yet another level. You can see there's a lovely big shower in there. And over on this side, there is a really big toilet area. And again, lovely to have them sort of separate from the bathroom. So you've got all this space, all this lovely light, all this big dressing area, elegant curved staircase. It does 
properly feel like a kind of duplex suite. Very unusual on a boat of this size to have that level of space and privacy. Now, there is a separate desk area here, so it's kind of an owner's office area. But the reason for that second door is because, understandably, at night time, you don't necessarily want to have to get up and make your way down a set of stairs if you happen to need a pee in the night. So what you can do is close this door here, lock that from the inside, and then that becomes part of the owner's suite and you have your own toilet in here at the same level as the bedroom. So effectively, it gives you the best of both worlds. You can have a day head during the day and also use it as the owner's ensuite toilet at night time. So that is where the owner sleeps and then downstairs we've got some guest quarters. So let's drop down and have a look at those. So now if we turn aft towards the stern of the boat, we've got a lovely double room here, big bed, lots of space, big hull windows. You can't really appreciate just how lovely those are going to be because we're <laughs> rammed in against another boat so you can't quite see exactly how bright that would be when you're out in an anchorage. We've got a bathroom in here, all en suite, with the same very heavily thick veined marble, lots of storage. There's an exact mirror image of that over here. So that's the first double guest cabin. This is the second double guest cabin. Again, exactly the same. We've got a bathroom through here, exactly the same. And then moving forward, that's just storage for linen and so on. But there are two further cabins here. And these are very cleverly set up too. So these are in fact, again, totally mirror image cabins, but on this side it's set up as a double. So it's two twins that slide across and create a double. And there is also rather cleverly a Pullman berth up here. And I can show you what that looks like in the mirror cabin opposite, because this is set up as a twin instead. So this time the beds have been separated, but that can equally be made up into a double. And here is the extra Pullman berth. So you can get another probably a child realistically up there, but it means you can get three people in both of these cabins if you need it. So it is a five cabin boat, but you can sleep up to 12 people on board. Now both of these have their own ensuite bathrooms too. Again, really good size shower, lots of light and space and fresh air. So four really good, really versatile cabins in addition to the owner's cabin on the main deck. So the other thing to point out from this owner's cabin is you have got your own access to the deck. So if I can open that and push that out, you can see that you have your own access to that full deck that we saw earlier on. So I won't whizzy back up there, but you get the picture. You can open the door. This effectively kind of blocks off that side deck. So it almost becomes a private four deck terrace. So, and then moving back through the yacht, this is the staircase leading up to the bridge deck. So this is the main helm station. Now this tends to operate with four crew on board. So you've got the captain and three people to help with looking after the guests. So this is a really lovely space. They can hang out here during the daytime. We've got a nice seating area here access to all the yacht systems over here so you can see here you've got fuel tank fresh water all the tankage you can check out all manner of things you've got the generator access you've got chargers we've got air conditioning everything and of course fully stabilized so you've got port and starboard stabilizers simrad screens joystick control so zenta joystick control if you want it is on the shaft drive engines but the Zenta system will coordinate the steering and the gearboxes and the thrusters to put the boat exactly where you want it, all just by using that control. Throttles there, obviously, and trim tabs there. Now then, let's go up from here onto the flybridge. And this is another real selling point of this yacht. 
So again, Meros have specified this slightly differently to the standard 95 yacht, really to make sure that it's fit for purpose for the, a fully guest. For, so when you've got full complement of 12 guests on board, you need a lot of space for eating and dining and drinking. And this has been set up for exactly that. So you've got a really big bar area here. I think this has actually been borrowed from the 90 Ocean. So a very modern, sophisticated looking bar. Three bar stools, they're all removable, so they can be lifted out of the deck and uh, it leaves a completely flush surface. So if you, if you want to use it more for a bigger party in the evening or daytime, you can clear the deck and have a really big space. Exactly the same with these tables. So they're all set up to join together. When you want to sit 10 or 12 people, you can all comfortably sit at that table or you can fold them all up you can see that those, those two wings belong to this, they fold on top. Then you've got a walkway through there and you've got two smaller tables, lots of seating space, perfect party zone. Now the bar itself is obviously fully equipped to look after all those guests. You've got a really wide grill there. You've got lots of, that's the ice maker in there. You've got fridges, sinks, absolutely everything. And then a second outside helm station here. So again, the captain can control the ship from here. Exactly the same, repeat the controls, but even though you've got the indoor helm station there, it's really nice to have an outdoor helm station too, so you can be out in the air with all the guests if you want to. Nice little raised seating area here, get a bit of a view forward over the deck, and then moving further aft, you can see we've got a lovely jacuzzi here, very sort of modern angular design, the glass section perfect spot so you can get it out in full sunlight or you can extend the shade and have it more shaded lovely little chaise long here looking out over the stern of the yacht and then this is clever too so we've got a crane up here and that is because you can also have a jet ski up here so as well as that williams jet tender you can have a really big jet ski up here that will lift up pick up the jet ski swing it out over the side of the boat and lower it into the sea so really good entertaining zone, lots and lots of toys. Got a full sound system you can see molded into the hard top here. And that is also a full opening fabric section of the sunroof. So even though you've got a hard top that will all open up and you have a big open area again to let the sun in when you want it to. So let's drop back down and see if we can hear a little bit more about how the shared ownership scheme works. So Lottie, you're the yacht manager and work for the Meros Yacht Share company. Can you explain a little bit about how the process works? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of our owners, they can either transition from either being a sole owner, a charterer, or perhaps they've never owned a yacht before, uh, which is where we come in. We're a fully uh, full management service. Right. So they don't have to worry about anything. The boats are in our care and they're responsible for nothing. They simply get to enjoy time on board, okay. which is what yachting is all about, really. So bottom line, the boat, if you bought it yourself, would be around about £9 million. Exactly. Pounds. Yeah. Okay. What does it cost to buy a share in this network? For this boat in the 95 yeah. yacht, she's just over a million. So right. one million and £62,000. Um, and that is your initial payment at the beginning for your share with a fixed annual cost of 240 every year. So how many shared owners would there typically be in? in we that? have a maximum of eight on right. each boat, yeah. So what does your million pounds and your one-eighth share buy you? Well, the million pounds is for six weeks on board. Now, those six weeks are spread across the year. Four of those weeks are between April and November, and then you get two weeks that are located in the winter time, where you benefit from being on the island of Mallorca, right. where the weather is mild, and we have a great network of people to make sure all year is enjoyable. So if you do come in the winter, what kind of things can you do? So here on the island, we've got very good friends with restaurants, at spas, also golf courses. Um, a lot of our clients love golfing, and of course, no one wants to do that in the, in the peak of summer here. It's very warm. So uh, included in that is horse riding, wine tastings, essentially anything that you want to do, we can make happen. Okay. Yeah. And what other costs? Are there running costs during the year? Yeah, that's the 240. So the 240 is fixed, though. Right. So anything that happens to the boat above and beyond what you could imagine is covered. So the owner is absolutely free of any spontaneous costs. They pay that amount every year and we fully manage it. It's maintenance to commercial standards. 
and uh, they've got nothing to worry about. So that covers all the birthing, all the insurance, Correct. all the maintenance? Yes, the only additional costs are what costs you have as an individual. So your APA, we would call this your personal allowance, so that's your food, your fuel and your drinks. Um, and if you want to cruise to alternative birthing, so in Ibiza or if we go to France, somewhere in France, then that of course is something that is added to your personal costs. So you're not uh, restricted to cruising in, in the Mallorca area, it goes on a bit of a loop through the Mediterranean, yeah, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Before an owner joins us, we always talk about what is possible on that boat of that size as well, of course. Um, and we have a loop across the Mediterranean. So we start in Mallorca, head to Monaco, spend some time in the south of France, and on the way back, we either can go to Sardinia and Corsica, or Corsica, Sardinia, sorry, and that would be interesting to go the other <laughs> way. But um, yeah, Corsica, Sardinia, and then back to Mallorca, or we go to Mallorca earlier and do the island. So you just try and book your weeks where you want to spend yeah, your exactly. cruising time. Yeah, exactly. It's communication. Yeah. I mean, there's eight people on a boat. It seems uh, like more than one, but it's not yeah. many. It's yeah. completely manageable yeah. and uh, it's bespoke to them. So, and during those weeks, it is effectively your boat. You can have as many guests as you can fit on board. Well, it's friends, a commercial family. boat, so yeah. we have to stick to 12 yeah. uh, cruising. Yeah. Uh, but you can take the boat wherever you like within your time period. As long as you bring it back to the, to the place you picked it up from or close by, then, of course, when you're on board, it's yours. And when it's in Monaco, it's a kind of open boat for all the owners to come and enjoy yeah, the Grand Prix. Absolutely, right? Yeah, absolutely. So Meros is not only just dividing an asset, which is the yacht ownership, but we also work on the lifestyle that comes with yachting. So anything shoreside uh, is it of interest. And Monaco Grand Prix, of course, is one of the most famous races in F1 and is in the harbour. We couldn't miss it. So yeah. every year we have a trackside berth for our Meros yacht and it adds a well it adds a level to oh. the ownership that means they can use it like a pontoon brilliant they come and visit across the weekend access to the boat all year round they get to meet each other yeah that's if nice. they want yeah. to yeah, yeah of course it's a networking opportunity as well yeah. to find like-minded individuals yeah. Um, and I think that's a, a really interesting part of the Meros concept and after the the two it's a two-year agreement what yes. happens after the two years so uh, in the two years in the first two years if you want to leave you can absolutely leave in the first year you can leave in the second year with a fixed uh, with a fixed cost of leaving which is eight percent on the investment um, on the third year which is the last year we give the option to either upgrade or then you would leave on year two so if they want to upgrade we then enter a new boat into the fleet and they'll move their ownership onto the new boat where they can then enjoy the exact same thing they did before and do it all over again. And what happens if, you, if for some reason you can't use all of your weeks? Is there a, an opt-out clause or some means of recouping yeah, some money? Yeah, of course, it's a really good question actually. We have a lot of owners that are spontaneously busy. So when that happens uh, with a co-owner, if they only use two or three of their weeks and they want to go abroad or they're not going to use them themselves, they actually can charter the weeks. So we find somebody's charter the weeks and they get an agreed value to come back to them. So the ownership really can bend and flex, hence the name FlexShare. It bends and flexes to the client and their lifestyle, whether they're using the boat or not. So there isn't that guilty feeling of having to use the boat. Anymore. Sure. And what would you say then are the benefits of, of this style of ownership rather than just chartering a boat for a four weeks a year? Yeah, or whatever, absolutely. Maybe? And do you know what? A lot of people ask this because obviously the rate of charter, if you want to do it once or twice, it equates essentially to the annuals. But I would say anybody that wants to charter more than twice a year, this from a cost efficiency standpoint is more interesting. But more importantly for us, it's a level of service. It's guaranteed, we know who you are. The crew know who you are. It's personalized. So um, we, we touched on it earlier when, you're, when we did our tour, but the boat can be uh, personalized. So when you get on board, your favorite pillows can be here. Your favorite music is already set up on a playlist for you. The chef knows your favorite dinners. They know where you went on holiday last week. They can make, they can recreate something for you. Ask you how you were. Ask you how your grandchildren are. It's a yeah. different, it's a different experience altogether. I mean, to compare it is one thing, but that's only on cost, I would say. Yeah. But to compare it on the quality of service, you can't. So um, effectively, it is like having your own private yacht absolutely. for the weeks you're there. You yeah. have no idea there were other owners. You would never know, and yeah. that's the art. Yeah. yeah. And realistically, I suppose, even if you do own the boat outright, you probably only manage to use it for six or seven weeks a year or something. Sure, yeah, absolutely. A lot of owners, and yeah. it's not like we've all worked in this industry for a fair while. We all know that owners are sort of four to six weeks maximum a year. I mean, busy men usually have yeah. hard jobs to afford the yachts. So, I mean, you don't get huge amounts of time to be 
to be relaxing. When they do want to relax, they don't want any worries. Yeah. So it's a good option. So you're there to take the worries away from them. <laughs> exactly. And deliver them the exactly. service and the, the experience of owning exactly. their own yacht. I always say that we can make the dream the reality rather than having the dream and figuring out the reality of that. Brilliant. So. All right. Thank you very much for showing us around the yacht and explaining how it all works. You're much so appreciate. welcome. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. One more area to show you, and that is the crew space. And that's accessed through here. You can see steps down from the bathing platform. And in here, we have one of the crew cabin. So see it's a twin bunk cabin there apologies for the mess in here it's just got all the kit for the boat show on but just very briefly they said i can show you it you can see there is a small mess area here that can get used in as occasional extra bunk if you really need to have a fifth crew on if you might have a nanny for a night or something then you can squeeze an extra person in there is another bunk cabin in there again full of kit at the moment it's a brand new boat so it's not being lived on at the moment uh, the galley area here, microwave, fridge, there is a bathroom in there, I'm not sure if we can turn the lights on, there we go, you see there's a bathroom in there, and then access into the engine room, which we'll have a very quick peek at. So I think the engineer is actually working in here, you can see we've got two twin uh, NTU engines, I think they're 2,000 horsepower each. And we won't have too much of a look around, but just give you a very quick peek inside. But crucially, that's not an area you're going to have to familiarise yourself with too much because you have a full crew and captain taking care of all that for you. So, that is the Meros Sunseeker 95 yacht. Really interesting to look around the boat, but also to hear about how the whole shared ownership thing works. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about that. Do please let me know what you think about the boat and indeed the whole yacht share ownership arrangement. Let me know what you think of it. Love to hear your thoughts and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.